Good evening. In the spring 2014 issue of the California Association of Professional Music Teachers, Communique, it is mentioned that the young generation of pianists would like to learn video game music. They would research the music on the internet until they find it. Teachers have thus become aware that students want video game music to be part of the repertory. Indeed, video game music can be considered part of a long tradition of transferring music composed for some other purpose for the keyboard. Examples include transcriptions of operas and symphonic arrangements for the piano. Let's examine video game music, its merits, and what pianists can learn from this music. Video game music has borrowed from classical music. Much of early video game music are excerpts from classical music, such as Mozart's Eine Kleine Nacht music and a famous early video game Donkey Kong. In this game, released in 1983 for the arcade machines, the player jumps over rolling barrels and climbs ladders to try to rescue the princess from Donkey Kong. In another instance, Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata appeared in the introduction screen in levels of Thexter. In this game, released for the Tandy computer in 1987, the player is a giant robot that can transform into a jet. The player is, is locked in a mysterious facility with no apparent means of escape. The goal is to transverse through 16 maze-like levels and destroy the main computer that creates the monster creatures in the game. Superfly, released for the PC in 1994, includes in the title screen a speed-up version, a sped-up version of Bach's Prelude in C minor from the Well-Tempered Clavier, Book 1, BWV 846. In this game, the player has to swat a green Superfly to advance to the next level without getting trapped. Such were the times when staff was limited and sometimes composers were not hired. A programmer would program a few melodies from easily recognizable classical music pieces. They may or may not have been appropriate to the activity of the game. As development budgets increased and technology developed, companies began to hire composers to compose original music. Eventually, technology was able to support not a single melodic line, but a melody, bass line, and an inner line that implied harmony. Technology in the 1990s allowed for up to 16 voices. In the mid-1980s, the classic Super Mario music was composed. It is worth studying Super Mario music as the Super Mario series sold 262 million copies worldwide. Super Mario is the most popular of all video game series. As people play the levels in the games, many enjoy and remember the catchy music. The Super Mario Bros. 1 main theme, composed in 1985, is so popular that it was ranked as the top cell phone ringtone on the Billboard charts for 125 weeks, or nearly two and a half years. After the release of the game, the game grew in popularity. This music is part of now what is now considered a classic game as composed to a modern game in video game music history. Super Mario is a game series by Nintendo that features certain challenges. In the game, the objective is for Super Mario to rescue Princess Peach, who is kidnapped by the antagonist, Bowser. The story behind the game is that Bowser invaded the Mushroom Kingdom. Then Bowser cast a spell across the kingdom and transformed all of its inhabitants into <laughs> inanimate objects such as blocks, plants, and other objects. Bowser knows that only the Mushroom King's daughter, Princess Peach, can undo this spell and, and therefore he kidnaps Princess Peach. In later Super Mario games, the objective <laughs> is the same as Princess Peach has a propensity to be kidnapped again and again. In Super Princess Peach, released in 2005, the roles were reversed. Princess Peach becomes a hero by rescuing Mario 
his brother Luigi, and Toads, who have been kidnapped by Bowser. There are eight worlds, and there are four levels within each world in Super Mario Brothers 1. Mario must jump across gaps or swim and avoid or jump on enemies to complete levels. Along the journey, Mario has to avoid or jump on Goombas, turtles, avoid flower plants, go through tunnels, throw fireballs, eat mushrooms, collect coins, power-ups, climb down flagpoles, and defeat his nem nemesis, nemesis Koopa and Bowser. Along his journey, he travels through various worlds, including the overworld, underground, underwater, and castle worlds. Koji Kondo is the main composer for Super Mario music. He was born in Nagoya, Japan in 1961. Since age five, he studied the electronic organ and later played the instrument in a jazz and rock cover band. In 1984, at age 23, he was a senior at the Osaka University of Arts and studying art planning and development. He applied to Nintendo as a composer and sound programmer. Nintendo is a game and hardware manufacturing company located in Kyoto. Kondo was accepted without having to submit any demo tapes. After he graduated from the university, he began working at Nintendo and continues to do so to this day. Surprisingly, though Kondo has created widely popular Super Mario music, the Legend of Zelda music, and other popular video game franchise by Nintendo, Kondo is not a classically trained musician who would have, who would have experience with various styles and analytical analysis abilities to analyze and understand what works and what doesn't for different musical settings, whether it be for a concert hall, film, opera house, or even a video game. Also, Kondo did not consider himself dedicated to music when he was studying at the university. After about one year of working with Nintendo and working on music for the boxing game Punch Out and the maze light -like game Devil World, Kondo composed the Super Mario Brothers 1 music. He continued composing for the Super Mario series, including games such as Super Mario Brothers 2, 3, Super Mario Worlds 1 and 2, and Super Mario Sunshine. In more recent Mario games, he has become a supervisor and collaborated with other composers such as Mihito Yokota, Toro Minigeshi, Yasuaki Iwata, Yo Nagamatsu, and Yoji Inagaki. One of Kondo's influences is Sergei Rachmaninoff. From examining Kondo's music, it is apparent that it is necessary to approach Kondo's music as if learning Rachmaninoff. Every note, rest, melodic contour, harmony must be scrutinized to give a satisfying performance. Since the release of Super Mario Bros. in 1985, Super Mario music grew in popularity and now is considered classic video game music. Compositionally wise, the structure is clear. Because of the activity in the game, the melodies are very memorable and evoke a playful feeling. Of the 262 million copies of 16 Mario games that have been sold, 40.2 million copies of Super Mario Bros. 1 games have been sold. About 40 million people have heard the overworld, underworld, underwater, and castle themes. The themes contrast with one another just as how the levels in the game visually contrast with each other. The overworld theme has a pastel blue background that depicts a great open sky in daytime. Due to technological advancements, it was no longer necessary to have a black background, such as in Donkey Kong. The difference between a blue background and a black background, though seemingly small compared to today's technological standards, made a big difference. 
Before Super Mario Bros. 1, nearly all video games had black backgrounds. Also, in the overworld level, there were brown bricks and steps, green hills and shrubs, green tunnels, yellow question mark boxes, brown goombas, walking green turtles, flying red turtles, red piranha plants, yellow coins, yellow and burgundy mushrooms, orange moving platforms, a shining invincibility star, a flagpole with a peace sign, and in later levels, red flying fish, black budsy beetles, and more. The mysterious underground level starkly contrasts with the overworld level. In the underground level, the background reverts to a black background. However, instead of the purpose of being black to conserve data, the black color actually has meaning and conveys the darkness and mysteriousness of the underground. All the bricks, goombas, turtles, piranha plants, and even the tint of the coins are various shades of turquoise blue. There are a line of bricks at the top of the screen that indicates there's limited space where Mario can move. These line of bricks contrast to the overworld where there's limitless blue sky. Furthermore, there are also bricks closer to the ground that impedes Mario from walking forward or jumping his maximum height. These bricks also convey a sense of a smaller and cramped space. In the underworld level, veteran Mario players know a secret passage where Mario overcomes the limits of the line of bricks at the top of the screen. To do so, Mario must ride on the moving platform near the end of the level and jump off of it to, the land, to land on top of the bricks. Then he can run on top of the bricks to a secret warp zone <laughs> where the player can instantly <laughs> warp to levels two, three, or four. In this way, the player does not have to take time to play all the levels in consecutive order. The entire game can be completed in four minutes and 58 seconds in the so-called speed runs, where players post on the internet a video of themselves playing the game as quickly as possible. Playing the game without warping would take a skilled Mario player about 29 minutes. There are two underwater levels, specifically the second level in World 2 and the second level in World 7. Instead of walking on Goombas, instead of walking Goombas and turtles, there are red and gray fish and white squid that hurt Mario if he runs into any one of them. Therefore, it is common practice for Mario to throw fireballs at these enemies to overcome them. It is unclear why the fireballs should not extingu extinguish since they are in water. In the dark blue water, there are green and purple plants the player has a sense of Mario being underwater as the player has to constantly, consistently press the jump button on the control pad to keep Mario from sinking to the ground. The castle level is always the last of the four levels within each world. level, there are gray bricks, an ominous black background, 
molten lava from which flames jump out of, twirling fireballs, and a giant Bowser or false Bowser. In the first seven levels, there are false Bowsers and a real Bowser in the final level eight. Bowser has a spiked green shell, two horns, throws gray axes, and spits fire. He is immune to Mario's jumping attacks, but not his fireballs. Bowser can be defeated by Mario jumping over him and touching a magical axe. As a result, <laughs> the bridge that Bowser stands upon disappears and Bowser falls into the lava below. The victory theme follows. <laughs> In the first seven levels, after defeating a false Bowser, Mario rescues a toad that says, thank you, Mario, but our princess is in another castle. When Mario rescues Princess Peach in World 8, the game over theme plays, and she says, thank you, Mario, your quest is over. We present you a new quest. Push button B to select a world. the option of selecting and playing in a world in a world in a more challenging environment. For example, buzzy beetles replace the Goombas and the enemies walk faster. The themes contrast with one another just as how the levels in the game visually contrast with each other. In later Super Mario games, motives from earlier games appear to retain a sense of the Mario music aesthetic. Similarly, in Wagner's Ring Cycle, light motifs are associated with specific concepts and events. An example in Super Mario music would be the use of the perfect fourth interval to represent boss and battle themes. In Super Mario Bros. 3 Skyship background music, there are perfect fourths. The Skyship level is when Mario boards a ship that flies in the air, jumps across platforms, and avoids shooting flames. There are flashes of lightning in the background. This music also occurs when Mario boards tank brigades and has to avoid cannonballs that fly through the air and walking time bombs called bob arms. Also, there are perfect fourths in Super Mario Brothers 3 Castle. Super Mario Brothers 3, Boss of the Fortress, there are perfect force in the left hand. fanfare for Super Mario Brothers 3 Hammer Brothers Battle, 
there are a series of ascending perfect fourths. Melody in Super Mario Brothers 3, Bowser Battle, uses many perfect fourths. There are perfect, many perfect fourths in the Super Mario World Castle theme. Kondo may have wanted to write American-based music to please the American gamers, hence the use of jazz-like rhythms and harmonies in ragtime music in Super Mario World. The use of perfect fourths may have been inspired by Hollywood movies, specifically Roman battle fanfares. Also, the USC Fight On fanfare uses perfect fourths. music references the ideas in Super Mario Bros. 1 and therefore retains the Mario music aesthetic. For example, there are intervals of a sixth in Super Mario Bros. 1 overworld theme. Those are the six. And in Super Mario Bros. 3 overworld theme 1, there are also six used. There are double notes in Super Mario Bros. 1 overworld theme. In Super Mario Bros. 3, level complete theme, overworld theme 2, Toad's House theme, and the ending theme, there are also double notes. It's overworld theme 2. Toad's House theme. theme in Super Mario Brothers 3. <laughs> Super Mario music is challenging video game music to play in several ways. Not only does the music require the performer to have good control and accuracy, but also the performer must know how the music relates to and supports their video game playing experience. In a way, this approach is no different than learning classical music. Relating certain musical motifs to dramatic ideas has a long tradition in music. In piano music, one can relate the Chrysleriana of Schumann to the drama of E.T.A. Hoffman, Kott Muir, 
or the list so-called Dante's Nara to Dante's Inferno, or the many examples of music in theatrical situations, all the way from oratorios to operas, right down to music that accompanies motion pictures. Now let's turn to examine the technical challenges that face the pianists when they try to learn this music. In the Super Mario Brothers 1 overworld theme, there are many times when the rhythms are syncopated. If the basic pulse is, then the rhythm is, On top of the rhythm, there is a melody that relates to Mario's movements on the screen. Mario's movements must be precisely timed so that he doesn't accidentally walk into a goomba or miss or jump or miss uh, jump to another platform. When Mario, when the music ascends, it represents Mario moving to the right. When the music descends, the Mar Mario moves to the left. On the screen. Mario's movements are very quick, and he runs back and forth. The player needs to adjust the controls very quickly. As a result, the music makes sense. Double notes are much more difficult to play than single notes. In Super Mario Brothers 1 music, including the overworld, castle, and water themes, there are many double thirds played by the right hand. This possibly represents the brothers, Mario and Luigi, with two voices, and this idea of double thirds as a duet appears in classical music. For example, in Chopin's Grand Polonaise, from the Andante Spinato and Grand Polonaise, Opus 22, there are two voices that appear after a preceding passage where there were single notes in the right hand, and this represents a duet. Furthermore, Chopin's G-sharp minor etude, opus 25, number six, is another example of how difficult it is to play double thirds and how beautiful the music is after the technical aspect has been mastered. Furthermore, beginning pianists can learn how to play three independent voices equally. With Super Mario Brothers 1 overworld theme, there are at least, there are most three lines that can be played simultaneously due to the technological limitations of the time. Each line has its own function. The first line is the melody. The middle line is for implying harmony. And the bass line Third line is the bass line. Each of these lines actually has its own beautiful melody, not just the highest line. In other words, a good performance of this music keeps, includes keeping the integrity of each melodic line. We've talked about syncopation and the difficult rhythms. We talked about maintaining integrity in all three voices. Now here's a dimension that we generally don't have to talk about in classical music, and that is for the player in order to really understand how this music is laid out and played on the keyboard, you have to understand how to play the game. We're not totally unfamiliar with this pattern. You have to know something about the classical period to arrive at a style that is appropriate to playing classical music. There's a long tradition of that. We say if one is going to play good classical music, one must have good finger articulation, one might use pedal more sparingly, one might, depending on the composer, think of structure more carefully and projecting the structure more carefully. Certainly one thinks about different things if one is approaching music written about 100 years later, such as Debussy. There you can think about what we call color, mixed tonalities, and maybe a flexible rhythm. That is called studying style. 
The way to study style of a video game is to learn how to play the video game. It is the quickest and most direct way to do it. Then once you play the video game, then you want to play the video game music on a piano, then you know exactly how it should be played. The pianist needs to understand how the music relates to the video game in order to play the music. Super Mario music has become so popular around the world that obviously publishers are getting into the business of publishing the music so that people can play it on the piano. Here, for example, are two publications by Alfred Music. As far as I know, Alfred has the franchise for Super Mario, which is probably a very lucrative one for them, so it will sell a lot of copies. Basically, most of the pieces in these books are uh, very simplified or medium simplified versions. These are books that teachers may purchase for the students. The arrangements by Shinobu Amayake uses accents, staccatos, and slurs. Koji Kondo has been credited as a composer, and Nintendo has been given the credit as well, since it's a Nintendo game. In the arrangement, it's been kept in the original key of C for the Super Mario Brothers 1 overworld theme. There's cut time, and half note equals 100. As one plays it, one must have the basic electronic sound in the head, as most young students will have, in order to capture the music. So here's a quarter note with a staccato marking, an eighth note without a staccato marking, and then a quarter note with the staccato marking. But however, this type of articulation isn't going to get the spirit of the music. Once again, music notation fails to capture to the nth degree the actual style behind the music, much as it does in classical music, whereas the notation for a Chopin nocturne fails to capture the subtle rubatos and the subtle inflections. That's typical of romantic music. So that's why I say you really have to know the game in order to understand the style. You have to have heard this, you have to have moved your fingers on the game controller in order to play the music well. Now here's the skyship music. Now here we have something that is far too simplistic to give the F effect that we want. From here the skyship theme has single notes instead of octaves, which I use in my arrangement. In the game, you're dodging cannonballs, so the sound should be more heavy to represent the cannonballs. And what they've done is in single notes, and then they say uh, the original key is atonal. But however, it seems like these Bs in the bass line are the pedal points. It sounds like a dominant function, which resolves to E. Well, it goes to E. But the dominant, of course, gives attention because the dominant never resolves. But with the single notes, uh, there's a tendency to lose the feeling of dodging cannonballs because uh, they're just single notes instead of octaves. Also, the dynamics say mezzo forte, 
but um, it doesn't, that's not the feeling one gets when playing the game. Uh, when there are fiery flames coming at Mario, uh, the music should be much stronger than Mezzo Forte. So there are mistakes, artistic judgments being made in many of these transcriptions that do not coincide with the game. Now here's the Super Mario Brothers 1 castle background music. Here the left hand is doubled in octaves. This makes sense to add octaves instead of single notes to add more drama. Again, Bowser is a very heavy character and about four times the size of Mario. The octaves, rather than single notes, certainly give a more weighty feel to the music. However, for the right hand, certain notes are missing. These notes are the inner voices, and probably they have been omitted to make the passage be more playable. However, it is too simplistic and doesn't give the effect of Mario running around through a mysterious castle, avoiding lava pits and rotating fireballs and eventually battling Bowser to rescue Princess Peach. And in my arrangement, I add pedal, and the pedal conveys the echoes of the rooms. So here's the arrangement with the single notes. <laughs> Music has much more harmonic harmonies. Many more harmonies. And let's look at the invincible background music. Here the arrangement includes a left hand rhythm that does not correspond to what I hear when I transcribe the star theme. To my to me I hear the rhythm as such. second note is one eighth note later than on the second beat. So one, two, three. The dynamic marking is only mezzo forte, yet I think when Mario gets a star which triggers this music to be played, the game player is very excited as Mario is temporarily invincible. Therefore, forte or fortissimo would be a dynamic marking I would use. These examples show yet again the limitations of sheet music notation to convey the style of the music. Experiencing the game is the most direct way to understand the style of Mario music. When I did my transcriptions for and put on YouTube, made YouTube videos, added a great deal of more notes. I not only added octaves, but other voices. I improvised where I felt that reflected the spirit of the game. For example, in the Super Mario World Castle theme, I improvised the right-hand arpeggios that expanded a large part of the keyboard to give a grandiose effect. The actual transcription uses arpeggiated root chords and inversions, but not arpeggios that span many octaves. This is the arrangement version from the book. <laughs> Improvisation is. Yeah. 
also added more octaves in the left hand to make a greater effect of a castle where there are doors leading to mysterious places, ghosts that sneak up to Mario when Mario's back is turned towards them, walking skeletons, lava pits, and more.